380,000 years after the Big Bang. It's a very precise number. You might say, how do you know that? Hey, everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. Um, this time into a topic that's, well, pretty huge. We're talking about ultimate origins here. How did the universe begin? Right. Now, you've probably heard of the Big Bang. Of course. But today we're going beyond the textbook, venturing into the mind-boggling realm of what came before. Or if there even was a before, get ready for a cosmic adventure because it's going to be a wild ride. What's so captivating about this is that while the Big Bang theory is a cornerstone of modern cosmology, it essentially hands us the universe already in progress. Yeah. A thrilling story, no doubt, but with the first few chapters ripped out. Okay, so we're missing some crucial backstory. Yeah. Before we get to that cosmic cliffhanger, though, let's recap what the Big Bang Theory does tell us. It describes a universe that burst into existence 13.8 billion years ago, starting from an incredibly hot, dense state. And we're not talking about an explosion in space like fireworks, right? right? But rather the expansion of space itself happening everywhere at once. How do we even begin to wrap our heads around that? Well, we do have compelling evidence that supports this idea. Think of distant galaxies like runners on a track. The redshift we observe shows they're moving away from us. And the further they are, the faster they seem to be moving. This suggests that they all started from a common point. And then there's the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB. It's like this faint echo of the Big Bang. Yeah. A snapshot of the universe as it looked just 380,000 years after its explosive debut. Precisely. The CMB tells us a lot about the early universe. Mm -hmm. Like its composition, primarily those light elements, hydrogen and helium, forged in the Big Bang's intense heat. But as you pointed out, the Big Bang theory leaves some pretty big questions unanswered. Right. Like what sparked that initial expansion? What powered this incredible cosmic expansion? That's where we get into the realm of inflation, yep. a period of unimaginable rapid expansion in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang. We're talking faster than the speed of light. Faster than the speed of light. It's this idea that the universe expanded exponentially blowing up like a balloon in a tiny fraction of a second. So before inflation, cosmologists were puzzled because the universe looked surprisingly similar in all directions, even though parts of it were too far apart to have ever been in contact. Kind of like, how could you mix cake batter perfectly if you only had time to stir half the bowl? How does inflation help us explain this? Okay, so imagine you have a balloon with tiny dots drawn all over it. Each dot represents a galaxy. As you inflate the balloon, the dots move farther apart. Not because they're moving across the surface, but because the surface itself, the fabric of space, is expanding. Inflation suggests that the very early universe underwent a similar, albeit much faster and more dramatic expansion, smoothing out any initial differences. Okay, I'm starting to see how that solves the uniformity problem. But does this mean inflation is a done deal? Case closed. Does this explain everything? Not quite. While inflation is a compelling idea, it doesn't tell us why this rapid expansion happened. What drove it? What put the bang in the Big Bang? It's like we found this incredible engine, this force that propelled the universe into being, but we have no idea what fuels it or who built it. A very apt analogy. And this leads us to another head-scratcher, a real cosmic conundrum. The singularity. All right, time to get really weird. What exactly is the singularity? And why is it such a problem for our understanding of the universe's beginning? Well, the Big Bang Theory, if we follow it back to the very beginning, points to the universe originating from a single point, the singularity. This point would have had infinite density and temperature, a point where our current laws of physics simply break down. So you're saying if we try to understand the singularity with our current knowledge, it's like trying to make one apple fit into an infinitely small box? Exactly. It's a situation where our tools fail us. Some physicists propose that the singularity itself might not be a real thing, but rather a sign that our theories need an upgrade. So what you're saying is that the singularity might not be a cosmic dead end, but rather a flashing neon sign pointing towards new physics, new ways of understanding the universe. Precisely. We might need a new model, perhaps one that unifies Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes how gravity works on the largest scales with quantum mechanics, the often bizarre world of the very small. It's like trying to read a book with half the pages missing and written in a language we don't fully understand. No wonder the singularity is giving cosmologists a run for their money. It's a challenge to be sure, but also incredibly exciting. After all, confronting these mysteries is what drives scientific discovery. So if the singularity might not be the ultimate answer, what other mind-blowing possibilities are out there? What are some of the alternative ideas that physicists are exploring? Well, one fascinating concept is that of a bouncing cosmology. Imagine instead of a single Big Bang beginning, our universe goes through cycles of expansion and contraction, almost like a cosmic heartbeat. 
Hold on, so instead of a beginning and an end, it's just an endless cosmic dance. That's even wilder than the singularity. It's certainly a captivating idea. And there's more. We also have the concept of the multiverse, the idea that our universe is just one of many, perhaps an infinity of them, bubbling up from some higher dimensional space that we can't even perceive. Okay, that's some serious next level thinking. But these sound like things straight out of science fiction. Are these ideas really grounded in science? Absolutely. While they might sound like something out of Star Trek, these concepts are rooted in theoretical physics and mathematical models. They illustrate how cosmologists are pushing the boundaries of knowledge, exploring all avenues to understand the universe's grand narrative. This is incredible. So we have all these theories, these tantalizing possibilities, but how can we test them? How do we even begin to study something that happened before the Big Bang, before even the faintest whisper of the CMB? That's the billion-year-old question, isn't it? But remember that baby picture of the universe we talked about earlier, the CMB? Right. That snapshot of the early universe just a few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang. You're saying we can actually learn something about the universe's very beginning from starting something that ancient. Believe it or not, yes. You see, the CMB isn't perfectly smooth. It has incredibly tiny variations in temperature and density. And these fluctuations hold valuable clues of the universe's earliest moments. So by studying these subtle variations in the CMB, we can start to piece together information about the universe's infancy. It's like cosmic archaeology searching for clues in the faintest whispers of the past. Precisely. By analyzing these patterns, cosmologists can make inferences about the universe's geometry, its shape, whether it's flat like a sheet of paper, curved like a saddle, or spherical like a balloon. Wait, the universe could be shaped like a saddle. I need a minute to process this. It's a lot to take in, isn't it? And we're just getting started. These CMB variations also tell us about the universe's early composition, how matter was distributed, and they can even provide hints about inflation itself. So the CMB is like a cosmic Rosetta Stone, helping us to decipher the universe's ancient language. In a way, yes. And with new telescopes and technologies, we're becoming more adept at reading these subtle signals, pushing our understanding further and further back in time. It seems like with every answer we uncover, we're met with even more profound questions, but there's something exhilarating about this quest for knowledge, this insatiable human desire to understand our place in the cosmos. Absolutely. And it's not just about the answers themselves, but the journey, the pursuit of understanding that drives us forward. Speaking of pushing boundaries, there's one more mind-boggling discovery that we haven't even touched on yet. The accelerating expansion of the universe. Not only is the universe expanding, but it's doing so at an accelerating rate. What on earth is going on there? That's where we'll pick up when we return for part two of this cosmic deep dive. It's as if the universe hit the gas pedal somewhere along the way. You see, for the longest time, we thought that the expansion of the universe set in motion by the Big Bang would gradually slow down, maybe even reverse one day. But then we observed something astonishing. We discovered that the expansion isn't slowing down at all. It's speeding up. It's like throwing a ball up in the air, expecting it to come down, but instead it just keeps going faster and faster. Precisely. It was a complete curveball. It forced us to confront the possibility that there's something else at play, something we hadn't accounted for, something that counteracts gravity on a cosmic scale. And that something is what we call dark energy. Exactly. A bit of a placeholder name, to be honest. Yeah. We call it dark because we can't see it directly, and energy because it seems to be driving the universe's accelerated expansion. But its true nature remains one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in all of science. So to be clear, we're talking about an invisible force making up a huge chunk of the universe, and we have absolutely no clue what it is or where it came from. Should we be worried? A healthy dose of scientific curiosity is certainly warranted. We estimate that dark energy makes up roughly 70% of the universe's total energy density. That's a significant chunk of reality that we're currently clueless about. That's more than a little mind-boggling. So we've got this invisible force pushing the universe apart, and we have almost no clue what it is or where it comes from. It's both awe-inspiring and, I have to admit, a tiny bit terrifying. It certainly adds another layer of intrigue to our exploration of the cosmos. But let's not forget those other tantalizing possibilities we touched on earlier. What about the bouncing cosmology and the mind-bending idea of a multiverse? Right, we can't leave those hanging. The bouncing cosmology with its endless cycles of expansion and contraction sounds like something out of ancient mythology. But you said it's actually rooted in some serious physics. It might sound strange at first, but the idea has been around for a while. Some physicists are exploring models where the universe didn't have a singular beginning, but rather undergoes periods of expansion, like the Big Bang, 
followed by periods of contraction leading to a big crunch, only to bounce back into another expansion. So it's like a cosmic inhale and exhale, an endless cycle of creation and destruction. What are the chances we could test this theory? Are we just talking about interesting math here? Well, one intriguing possibility is that a previous cycle of the universe could have left behind faint traces, subtle patterns in the cosmic microwave background radiation. Imagine it like ripples in a pond after you throw a stone. These ripples could hold clues about what happened before the current expansion phase. So we might be able to find echoes of previous universes' whispers from beyond the Big Bang, encoded in the very fabric of space-time. It's certainly a possibility, though. Detecting such subtle signals would be a monumental challenge. But then again, who would have thought we'd be able to detect the faint afterglow of the Big Bang itself? That's true. And what about the multiverse? The idea that our universe is just one of countless others, that's a concept that truly stretches the imagination. It certainly does. The multiverse idea arises from certain interpretations of quantum mechanics and theories like string theory. Imagine a vast cosmic landscape where universes bubble up like soap suds, each with its own set of physical laws and constants. So there could be universes out there where gravity works differently, where time flows backward, where I actually like the taste of cilantro. Now you're getting the hang of it. The possibilities are literally endless. It's mind-blowing and more than a little humbling to think about. But if we can't directly observe these other universes, how can we even begin to say whether they exist? That's the million-dollar question. One way might be to look for subtle interactions between our universe and others. Imagine two soap bubbles briefly touching, distorting each other's shape. Similarly, our universe might bear faint imprints from fleeting contact with another. So we're searching for cosmic bruises, signs of a multiverse fender bender? In a way, yes. Now, I must emphasize that these ideas are highly speculative, residing on the frontiers of theoretical physics. But the fact that we can even contemplate them, that our equations allow for such possibilities, speaks volumes about how far our understanding of the universe has come. It's incredible to think how much we've learned about the universe's origin story, but it seems like every discovery just leads to even bigger, more profound questions. It's both exhilarating and a little overwhelming, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't have it any other way. That's the beauty of science. It's a journey of constant discovery, pushing the boundaries of knowledge. And as we delve deeper into the mysteries of the cosmos, we're forced to confront some of the most fundamental questions about existence itself. Questions like, where did it all begin? What came before the Big Bang? Is our universe unique, or are we just one small part of a much grander cosmic tapestry? We've covered a lot of ground in this episode, but we've barely scratched the surface of these mind-blowing concepts. When we return for the final part of this deep dive, we'll explore what this quest to understand the universe's origin story tells us about ourselves and our place in the grand scheme of things. It's really awe-inspiring when you think about it. We're delving into questions that humans have pondered for millennia, looking up at the night sky, trying to make sense of our place in this vast, mysterious universe. It's humbling and exhilarating all at once. It truly is. And while we might never have all the answers, the very act of searching, of questioning, is what pushes the boundaries of human knowledge. We've journeyed from the familiar territory of the Big Bang, venturing into the strange realm of inflation, the singularity problem, and even dipped our toes into the mind-bending concepts of the bouncing cosmology and the multiverse. It's a lot to process. So as we wrap up this cosmic deep dive, what are some of the key takeaways you hope our listeners will carry with them? I think the biggest takeaway is that our understanding of the universe is constantly evolving. What we consider to be truth today might be revised or even overturned tomorrow as we make new discoveries. It's a good reminder that science is a process of continuous exploration, not a collection of static facts. Absolutely. And this exploration often leads us to even deeper questions. We started with the question of the universe's beginning, but we've also touched upon profound questions about the nature of reality, the limits of knowledge, and even the possibility of other universes. It seems like the more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. That's the paradox of knowledge, isn't it? Every answer opens up new questions, pushing us to keep exploring, to keep seeking a deeper understanding of ourselves and the cosmos we inhabit. So what's next for cosmologists? What are the big mysteries they're grappling with now? What are the next frontiers in our quest to understand the universe's origin? Well, unraveling the mystery of dark energy is certainly at the top of the list. Huh? What is this enigmatic force that's driving the universe's accelerating expansion? And where did it come from? These are questions that keep cosmologists up at night. I can imagine. And what about those alternative models we talked about, like the bouncing cosmology and the multiverse? 
Are those just interesting ideas or could they become testable theories in the future? They're definitely more than just interesting ideas. Physicists are actively working on developing these models, looking for ways to make predictions that we can potentially test with observations. It's a long shot for sure, but the history of science is filled with examples of seemingly outlandish ideas that turned out to be true. It's a reminder that the universe is full of surprises, and our imaginations are often the first step in uncovering its secrets. Indeed. And who knows, maybe someday we'll have telescopes powerful enough to detect echoes from a previous universe, or observe the subtle interactions between our universe and another. The possibilities are truly mind-boggling. As we wrap things up, I'm struck by a sense of wonder, a feeling of being incredibly small, yet also deeply connected to something much larger than myself. It's both humbling and inspiring. I couldn't agree more. It's a reminder that we are part of this universe woven from the same stardust that ignited in the Big Bang billions of years ago. So to our listeners, the next time you gaze up at the night sky, remember that you're looking at a universe teeming with mysteries. A universe still unfolding, a universe that continues to challenge our assumptions and expand our understanding of what's possible. And never stop asking questions. Never lose that sense of wonder. For it's in the pursuit of knowledge, in the asking of big questions, that we truly begin to grasp the vastness and beauty of the cosmos. Beautifully said. That's all the time we have for today's deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep looking up.